Toyota has recalled, as you know, millions of its vehicles after increasing reports of a sudden acceleration problem. Cops investigating the crash that happened here tell me that their investigation is still ongoing. The board's decision essentially ended the hospital's very long battle to stay afloat. I had the pleasure of talking with uh, one of the traders here on the floor. You know, Colleen, it is not often that one gets a chance to take a part in writing of history. But for Mohammed Tamad, a structural engineer living in Las Vegas, the part he has played in defining his country's future will live with him forever. And in spite of the vandals' handiwork here on the track field, the gate remains open and unlocked, allowing access to anyone. Clarkstown police say the graphic graffiti depicting male genitalia and written profanity could have happened at any time between Saturday and Sunday morning. Also on the ground, the words, learn to hold your licks. An obvious dig at the Clarkstown North students who went on a drinking binge during homecoming weekend and took an unsupervised trip to New York City. Many of the students became ill after drinking and some ended up in local hospitals. It's been the talk of the week. They can't hold their liquor. The bitter rivalry between Clarkstown North and Clarkstown South High Schools is no secret. But as he practices football on the defaced field at his school, senior Todd Margolis says this time that rivalry has gone too far. We try to have a good rivalry with South. And like that, the fact they do this to our school, like, you know, is a little disrespectful. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think any of us are going to stoop to that level, but, you know. Unfortunately, when you have the behavior of, uh, of a few kids, uh, which gets a lot of media attention, it detracts from all of the positive stuff. A vandalism report has been forwarded to Clarkstown police detectives, and a lieutenant tells me that they are actively investigating. In New City, Carol Wilkinson, News 12. The yellow police caution tape and this structure, knocked over by frenzied first responders, are the only signs of the dramatic rescue that happened here on Friday. Ten-year-old Jake Schwartz of Ardsley was playing with friends and was chasing after a ball on the neighbor's property on Lincoln Avenue when he fell 20 feet down an old well covered by wood that had rotted. Jake's father tells News 12 that he will never forget what happened and how tragedy was averted. We were just finishing up dinner and uh, the kids were playing in the black backyard while, when one of the kids came running in, called for help. Jake fell down a hole and we couldn't figure out where this hole was. We didn't even know that there was a, a well in our neighbor's backyard that, that was at risk to our kids. There's no one currently living in the house and in this quiet neighborhood, Jake's dad tells me that had his son not been playing ball with friends, that his fall into this well may have gone unnoticed for quite some time. I was able to look down the hole. It was pitch black. I couldn't see him, but I could um, speak to him and he was responding. Luckily, Jake's rescue took only 20 minutes. He was conscious, but it was cold. He was getting cold. It was black. It was dark down there. I mean, we had lights down there for him so we didn't blind him, but he was getting a little uh, antsy down there. But now Jake is fine. And after a quick checkup at the hospital, he's again playing with friends this time at a nearby playground. He is forbidden to go near the neighbor's backyard, basically. He needs to stay in the confines of our backyard. Carol Wilkinson, News 12. This is all that remains of the ill-fated single-engine Cessna that crashed Saturday in a ball of flames in Armonk, just two minutes after takeoff from the Westchester County Airport. Keith and Lisa Weiner, their 14-year-old daughter Isabel, and her 14-year-old friend Lucy Walsh all died in the crash, whose cause remains unknown. He did declare an emergency, but he did not give details on the nature of the emergency or the problem that he was having. The National Transportation Safety Board is spearheading the investigation and provided rare access to the crash site, along with details of the moments before the plane went down. The aircraft collided with trees at about 50 feet above the ground and then collided with the ground at a steep attitude. Investigators say the plane burst into flames on impact, although the engine and propeller ironically remain undamaged. It is a startling image of the wreckage and the crash site, cold hard proof that four people lost their lives here. Meanwhile in Piermont, where Keith Weiner owned an art gallery, 
Those who knew the family are trying to come to grips with the shocking news of what has happened. We're all pretty devastated here in uh, in Piermont because yesterday, the day before, we just uh, he's just our next door neighbor and he was here and now today it's like gone, it's over. The NTSB investigation could take months as authorities look into the pilot's flying history aircraft maintenance records, and the environmental conditions at the time of the crash. The wreckage could be removed from the crash site within the next 24 hours. These are the three people arrested and charged with various counts of child endangerment. So far, no parents have been charged, but an aunt, 20-year-old Kobe Maldonado, and an uncle, 21-year-old Ray Luis Medina, both of Yonkers, are facing charges. 19-year-old Oreck Gonzalez of Pineville, North Carolina, is also charged. Cops say they allowed three of the children in their care to be exposed to the dangerous drug PCP. There were six kids in the apartment, all under five years old, who were treated at area hospitals. One child remains in stable condition. While there's no shortage of public outrage about this story, few people are willing to speak openly about it or even admit that they know the people involved. I showed this woman pictures of the three suspects to see if she knew them. No, I see him a lot. What was he like? What did did he talk know. to you? You ever speak to him? Or? No. Police responded to this apartment on Van Cortland Park Avenue in Yonkers Friday night, where Maldonado and Medina lived, on a report of possible child abuse. Inside, they found the kids exposed to the dangerous hallucinogenic drug. Who would do that to the kids, but I can't say nothing else, you know. Like, you can't say anything else about them? I live here. This man expressed an opinion about the case, but was afraid to give us his name. That's just insane. People shouldn't, they need to think about their actions. These are ch children. Meanwhile, those who live here continue to go about their lives. Children play on the sidewalks and adults cook on an open grill in celebration of Memorial Day. But one passerby who doesn't know any of the people involved was not shy about what he thinks should happen to anyone who endangers the well-being of a child. They deserve the death penalty. That's a little kid. That's the, that's the world of the life right now. In Yonkers, Carol Wilkinson, News 12. Let's go to Carol Wilkinson live in Tenafly. Carol? That's right, Monica. Now, the uh, road between West Railroad and Tenafly Road reopened to traffic just a short time ago. However, cops investigating the crash that happened here tell me that their investigation is still ongoing. Hours after the accident, investigators are still analyzing the scene and taking a critical look at this four-door Lexus. The accident happened just after 4.30 p.m. when police say the driver of the Lexus lost control of the vehicle while trying to back into a space at this CVS drugstore. Four middle school girls sitting on the sidewalk at the time were injured, suffering cuts and bruises. It's devastating. It's kind of scary to, you know, see these kids. They're just nice day coming out of school. It's, it's scary. Restaurant owner Louis Correas heard the crash and rushed outside to help. I taken my phone and called 911 to help. I, you know, I, I, I'm shot and I, I never see that happen before. Now, at last check, those seventh grade girls who were injured in the crash were all taken to the hospital. We're told that they're still hospitalized, all in stable condition. Now, the driver of the vehicle, the woman that was trying to park her vehicle in front of that CVS drugstore, we're told that she wasn't hurt. She was a little bit shaken up. Well, she was taken to the hospital as a precaution. There's no word yet on whether she will face any charges. Reporting live from Tenafly, I'm Carol Wilkinson. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Carol.